So I've been waiting to make this post for a while, as of recording this, about three weeks. But I ran into a problem. So I was coming up to the end of my migrated protected year on universal credit. I had my last payment to go and on the 20th of the month I get a request to put in my earnings and expenses. On the 23rd I get an email notification to tell me what the calculations are and how much I'm going to get and then the payment comes through on the 27th. And I don't know why but for some reason for this one final payment nothing happened. I got the request to put in my calculations, which I did, and then I didn't get anything on the 23rd, and I didn't get anything on the 27th, and I didn't get anything the week after that. So I emailed UC through the journal and didn't hear anything, and so I emailed them again, and then I get an email from someone saying, sorry I was on holiday don't know why it's only one person that can answer the query. They had no idea why, but it was something to do with the capital, which basically means it's to do with the savings that I have. Now, I've been on the protected year. The savings don't count in the same way for universal credit because it's a protected year, so they discount it. So if you have more than £6,000 in savings, it's not counted but they will deduct certain amounts of money off your monthly payments because of the savings that you have that are over the 6000 So I lose a certain amount of money each month because I have savings. Fair enough. Uh, they couldn't explain why my payment had been held up. Apparently some general manager or somebody had had to look at my calculations because of the capital and I said oh, I don't understand that I've been on the protected year for 11 months and no one's ever had to relook at my calculations and she said well I don't know I'll chase it up for you and then a few days later which I think was on the 5th of September the payment and the calculations all appeared in my account the calculations that have appeared on my online journal, they look the same as ever. Nothing's nothing different. So I don't know what was going on there. It doesn't explain why there was a hold up and money appeared in the bank. And I've had heard nothing since. So at least I've now had that. Now I don't know what happens now that my year has ended. I would have thought they'd be pretty quick to cancel your universal credit claim, off you go, you're on your own because you don't fit the criteria. But not only have they added the dates for my next, when I need to put my calculations in, which would be the 20th of September, but they've also booked me a meeting with a work, co work coach in November. And I'm assuming that it's just because the system hasn't caught up and that at some point it will. But I don't understand why, when they're so quick to stop people being able to claim and cancelling people's claims, why they're taking so long to do this. And I won't complete any more assessments. Um, I won't put any more information in because I know I'm no longer entitled to it. So if I keep doing it and they keep accepting it and giving me money, they're only going to want the money back and I'm not going to run into that situation. So... I will give it another week or so and I am going to email them at the journal and ask what's going on because it just I'm surprised it's taken them that long to kick me off the system because they really want to kick people off the system. Anyway, so that's why things have been delayed with this particular post. What I want to do is I'm going to give you an overview of my year. I'm going to show you what income I've calculated that counts. I'm going to show you a calculation of my expenses. I'm going to show you how much they've taken off for savings, how much they've added for this, that or the other. 
and give you an overview of what I've had from the system over the course of that 12 months. Just to kind of wrap it up really, because not many people talk about the numbers, they talk about the system and experiences, but nobody really talks about, well, this is how much I got, or this is how much they took, or this is what I was entitled to in a pounds and pence amount. So I thought I'd do that because I don't mind putting those numbers in. This is what it is. And it might be useful for you if you are also self-employed coming into that year. And it may be that you think, well, those numbers aren't very big. But if you're entitled to it and you're at a kind of a crossroads and you're not sure what to do, this money could actually make a difference to your budgeting for the year. It's small amounts of money, but it's also possibly essential money given the cost of living crisis and how unstable business is right now. So I hope you find this useful and do drop me comments about this um, and just let me know what you think or if you have any questions, anything you're not sure about. And um, yeah, I'll speak to you again soon. So I hope you enjoy what's coming up now. It's on the, everything's been recorded out of sync because of this hold up. So it's all a bit confusing, but um, I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. So I've now had my final payment through from Universal Credit and my claim has ended. There is just one thing that's hanging over which is that issue I had with savings interest. And I don't know how long that's going to take. They said it could take quite a long time for that to be resolved. So I'm taking that out of the equation at the moment. But what I want to do today is run through all the numbers because not many people actually talk about what you actually get, what you will actually lose, and is it worth it. Now everyone's circumstances are very different, and I know that the system works better for some people than for others. Now I had a look at a statistic, which I will find for you now, and it was talking about average payments. So it, the question was, what is the average universal credit payment? And these numbers were calculated last November. So November 2023. And it says that single people with no children had the lowest average payment amount of £650 per month. And then the highest average was couples with children who were receiving approximately £1,140. Now those averages are averages because when you add up everybody and then split it up, it's different. So my average universal credit amount per month, if you divided it up across the 12 months, was about £399, I think. I will go into those figures a bit more. But first, I just wanted to address a couple of things. And, you know, I've, I've been accused of being entitled. Don't I feel bad for sponging off the system and taking money out of other people's pockets? If I had never put into the system, if I had never given back through my pay, paychecks and whatever else, maybe I would. Like, if I'd never contributed anything to the system, I would feel bad about that. But that's not the case, and I think that people who make those comments haven't taken the time to watch my other videos. They haven't asked about other things in my background. Now, national insurance is the system that pays for benefits. And that's not just like universal credit. It'll be, um, it goes towards pensions. It goes towards um, uh, other forms of retirement. I do have some information here on that. And I will put it on the screen as well. 
just to get the clarification right. So, national insurance is a tax on earnings and self-employed profits that pays for benefits when people are sick, unemployed or retire. The money raised from national insurance goes into a government fund and is used to pay for a number of things, including state benefits such as the state pension, statutory sick pay and maternity leave, weekly income and lump sum benefits for participants upon death, retirement, unemployment, maternity and disability. And when you look at the tax definition, income tax is collected by HMRC on behalf of the government. It's used to provide funding for public services, for example, the NHS, education and the welfare system, as well as investment in public projects such as roads, rail and housing. So those are the definition, definitions of what those things are. So when you, when you pay your national insurance and your income tax, that is what those amounts go towards. So I'm going to do a quick breakdown of my work background so that people who think I've just sponged off the system have a, 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 bit, of, a bit of better information about where I come from. Now, I will say that just because you have paid into the system it does not mean that you should gamify it to get it back out again. Of course, that's not how it works. But I just want to give you some numbers because I think people assume that um, I just sit around playing at being a self-employed person and take anything I can get my hands on. And it's not true. So, I went out to work at 18. I didn't go to university. I did my A-levels. I went out to work. And I worked until I was 35. So for 17 years, I was paying my tax on my national insurance. I did all sorts of different jobs. I climbed the work ladder, increased my income, worked in all sorts of different places. And then at 35, I decided to go to university for three years. I came out at 38. And then I set up my business and became self-employed. And so I have now been doing that since... I was 38, so we're on to the 12th, 13th year of my self-employment. So for the first 17 years, I was paying my tax on my national insurance. Now, up until this year that I claimed universal credit, I had never been on benefits, so to speak. There's one caveat with that. So my, my working career has been 29 years so far. And if you take out the three years I was at university, you'd be training. So throughout that 29 years, I have always paid my national insurance. Even as a self-employed person, regardless of how much I earned in my income, you still have to pay national insurance. So I've always paid my national insurance. And um, I will get my full state pension on that basis, presuming anyone gets it. And... I paid income tax on the first 17 years. After I left university and set up my business, there were times when I did pay income tax because I didn't just go straight into self-employment. Um, I, was, I was running my business, but I was also going out and taking part-time and full-time jobs to fill the gap as I was trying to increase and improve on my business. So there were various points during that second chunk of 12 years where I was paying income tax as well. So I have pretty much always paid into the system. And you pay into the system so that if you need help, you can get help. And there are certain benefits where unless you have paid into the system, you won't get help. So in... Uh, 2016 I first started to claim working tax credits and I did that for about six years and working tax credits is a top up for self-employed people on low incomes and it changes every year so the old system was every June 
I would get the forms through, I would report my previous year's income based on self-assessment, so it was all linked up to HMRC so they could see that, and then based on that they would decide how much I would get for the next year, and then the next year they would relook at the previous year, and if um, for some reason I'd earned a lot more in that, net, that previous tax year, they would take that back out of the next year's um, payments. So my average payment per month on working tax credits was £263 per month. But it varied wildly and it didn't increase with inflation either. Um, and the payments used to, used to be a lot smaller than they are at the point where I ended. And then in June last year I got my forced migration notice for universal credit and I started my claim in the August. And I already knew that I was not going to get onto Universal Credit full time, but they had what they called a protected startup year, so that people who were coming from the legacy benefits had a year to readjust. Um, so you were protected, so you were guaranteed to get that one year on Universal Credit where you had a chance to navigate the system, a chance to relook at your employment situation. Um, you theoretically got help from the DWP at your three monthly meetings on finding work because if you decided that you were not gainfully self-employed, you weren't making enough, you could theoretically get yourself back into work with their help. I mean, I don't know how much help it actually was. I didn't find it useful in that respect. Um, but it did help me with some other things. So I've done the universal credit for uh, for one year. And I mentioned before about those numbers about the average payments per person. I've looked at my year and my average monthly payment from universal credit was £399. And there were months where I got nothing because I'd had a good month. And there were months when I got more because I'd had a bad month or... I just had increased expenses because, um, you know, it was that time of the year when business insurance was due um, and I was paying into, trying to pay into my into a, a new pension that I'd set up in December, things like that. So that all makes, so every month was very, very different. So that's the, that's the system. So I've paid into the system for 29 years. And when people tell you, why do you feel entitled? Why are you sponging off the system? Why are you taking money out of my pocket? We all pay into that system. We have to pay into the system, but we pay into it because if at some point we need help, we can get it. And if you've paid into that system for 20 or 30 years of your life, and then you need help and someone calls you a sponger, how does that make you feel when you think about the amount of money that is taken out of your pay packet every month to pay for those things? So, no, I don't feel bad about it because even when I was claiming working tax credits and even when I've been claiming universal credit, I have still had to keep paying my national insurance even though my tax bracket has been too low. So I've still been paying into the system in one way or another. So no, I don't feel bad about it. Because I've paid my money in. I don't take out the system very often. Um, I see a doctor once a year, so I avoid the NHS. Uh, I don't take a lot out of the system. Things that you pay for it, you think, oh, well, you're, you know, you're using that, like you get your bins collected and all that sort of thing. That's what your council tax pays for, and I've had to pay all those things as well. So I've always paid into the system. So no, I'm not a sponger. I've taken back a small amount when I have needed the extra assistance. And right now, there are lots of people who need that help. So I just wanted to clear that up. So now I'm going to move on to talking about the actual numbers. These are the actual numbers of all, all the money that's been processed through my universal tax cre 
universal credit payments. I'm going to do the income, I'm going to do the outgoings, I'm going to look at the averages and um, hopefully that will give some clarity. I know that there are people still being migrated and they will still be migrated up to the end of this year. So if you're not sure whether you want to claim and apparently HMRC, uh, apparently the DWP is going to say five billion pounds because of people who have chosen to not do the migration because they either just can't be bothered with the system, that they've heard how awful the system is, that they don't think it's worth it for the money. So I'm doing this to help people who aren't sure to make a decision so that you can look at this. I mean, you can look at my particular circumstances and I think financially for my circumstances for the situation that I'm in, my income's not been too bad. There will be people who will be worse off than me, who will be eligible for the system, who will therefore get a lot more money than me. So I hope that you find this interesting. I'm going to do this now and uh, let me know what you think, if you think it's been useful, and I will get stuck into it. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to turn <laughs> A very complicated, busy spreadsheet into something that makes sense. So I'm going to start with my overall income. Now, last year's income year was very different to this year. I have earned more money this year than last year, and some of that is because of universal credit. Some of it is because I've increased some of my incomes and I found new ones, there's all sorts of things going on. So what I'm looking at here is um, an income year that runs from essentially September 2023 to August 2024. So the two years are very different and I'm, I've just kind of done everything overall so that it's just like one amount. So for my income, now don't forget as well that some types of income you don't have to declare. And, and also remember that I am self-employed, so there are different things that I can claim on expenses. So my overall uh, declarable, which is basically my taxable income, came to £12,703.75 and pence. And I have income streams that have only started this year and I have income streams that I have increased this year. So I have various income streams. Theoretically, I describe myself as self-employed because I run my own or business, which I've had for 12 going on 13 years but business has been tough we are in a cost of living crisis nothing is going to plan and that's one of the reasons that back in 2022 I started all my side hustles because I needed to increase my income as my actual business income dropped post Covid so the jobs that I now or the income streams that I now have include um, I do cleaning jobs so I, I have uh, I, I run through an agency to get cleaning work you are classed as self-employed it's not a PAYE job so I have to declare it through my self-employment and I had three clients last year and I'm now up to four so I have some income from cleaning jobs. Um, I have interest from bank accounts which I mistakenly included in my income and we're now reversing that hopefully I've put in a claim back with UC because they said I need to claim that money back so I'm going to take that out. That means that my total income, which I declared, which was £12,703.75, pence, is actually £11,375.33. Uh, pence. 
uh, and that's because the total interest on savings that I mistakenly declared was £1,328.42. So I'll talk about that a bit more in a bit. I do surveys and market research. That brings an amount of, an amount of money every year. I have my business, which is online. I sell through Etsy. And then in December, I started up my own website through Shopify because Etsy is an absolute joke. So at the moment, I am selling through both, but most of my income is now coming through my Shopify store, which is great. And uh, other income, um, the medical trials work that I have done. haven't done very well on that this year, but I made a reasonable amount of money out of that last year. So that counts because I earned that in the September after I started my, my claim. I now get an income from YouTube. I am monetized on YouTube, so that brings in a small amount of money. Um, I published a book back in 2017, so there were some book orders. I get donations from Coffee, and you'll find that link in the show notes below and in my channel description. And people who want to donate um, to my channel for the work that I do, just producing videos, you can donate in there. And I also sell on Vinted. Now, I started selling on Vinted in January. I had a, a declutter like that and just sold a bunch of personal stuff. And from there it kind of grew. I have a couple of friends and family who regularly have little declutters and throw stuff at me and say here you can have this sell it do what you want with it so that's where I had income coming from that so my total income what well, if I take out the interest that I mistakenly claimed um, comes to eleven thousand three hundred and seventy five pounds and thirty three pence now that's just declarable income there are certain things you don't have to declare I mean obviously the universal credit income comes in on top of that, that boosts that, but I also have other personal things, so I still sell, I still declutter at home, and I sell personal stuff, sometimes on eBay, sometimes on Vinted, depends on what it is, it's small amounts of money, um, and also you, up to a certain amount you don't have to declare gifted money. So if my parents give me a £200 cheque at Christmas as part of my Christmas gifts, you don't have to declare stuff like that. So there's that as well. So that's the declarable income. Now, in terms of what you get from Universal Credit and what they take away from you, that has changed. That changed in April when the new tax year started. So the original allowance last year was £388.74, that's a single person allowance. That went up in April to £393.45. The housing went from £399.98 to £525. And there was something else called, um, it's an income protection, it's a it's a legacy benefits protection, so what they did, because you were being forcibly migrated from working tax credits to universal credit, they gave you an extra top-up amount to help balance out the money while you worked things out. And it was supposed to top up because working tax credits was paying more than universal credit. Now, I haven't found that in my experience. I was getting a lot less on working tax credits than I am on or was on universal credit. So the protection amount that I was getting when I first started my claim was £190.99 per month and in April that went down to £41.26 and I think that went down because the allowance went up and the housing allowance went up. So that meant that theoretically the, the income that I could get from all those things went from £979.71 per month 
to £959.71. So that's basically a reduction of £20 per month. Now, other deductions, because I have more than the £6,000 worth of savings, because it's called a protected year because you are protected from that. So you can have more than that, and then depending on how much you've got, we'll decide whether or not they'll take you on. I think you can have quite a reasonable amount of savings before they will not let you have the protected year. So my deduction on savings per month was £174. So whatever they were going to award me each month, they would take off £174 because of my savings that were over 6000 So that means in the total year that I was claiming, they took back £2,088. Um, what else? So my, And then for every pound that you earn your UC claim gets reduced by 55p. So if I looked, if, if I didn't include income, because obviously that varied each month, when you looked at the allowance, the housing, the protection, and then you took off the saving, that will give me an overall possible um, income of £785.71 as of my this year's claim post-April, potentially. Now I never ever got that, so um, so that so yes, yeah, so total money they took back because of my savings was two thousand and eighty eight pounds. They paid me over the course of the year one thousand two hundred and sixty nine pounds and seventy two pence of that um, protection money. In December, I started up a private pension, very late. On that one. Throughout my working life I've never had a workplace pension, I was never eligible in the jobs that I had and I never thought about starting a private pension. I was one of these people that thought pensions are evil, um, they're going to rip you off, you shouldn't have them. Um, but as my, as my income has improved over the last few years I decided that I needed to address the issue of my lack of retirement funding because at that point in time all I had was the state pension if it even exists when I retire. So I took out a, a private pension in December and then a few months later I started up a Stocks and Shares ISA and I contribute to each of those. So as part of your universal credit expenses, you can declare your pension as an expense. So I was paying in £192 a month from December, but because I wanted to use my full allowance for the 2023-2024 year, I topped it up with some of my savings. So my total pension that I theoretically claimed back in expenses over the course of my year on universal credit was £3,648. My total expenses over the course of that year on universal credit, including the pension, came to £5,119.70. And all those expenses are work-related and they are things that you can claim as a self-employed person that are reasonable. I had one or two things that I wouldn't normally um, buy. So my laptop blew up in December, so I had to buy a new laptop. I had to upgrade the software that I use for making these videos. So I had to buy that. I had to renew my Shopify. It got to one year. Uh, I think that was in March. Sorry, that was in January. So that had to come out. So there were things that I never used to have to pay for and now kind of have to if I'm going to get better at doing what I do. So 
yeah, the total expenses out, including the pension, was five thousand one hundred and nineteen pounds and seventy pence. So if you take my declarable income, you take out my expenses minus the pension because theoretically the pension money is still mine, it's just somewhere where I can't get at it. So I've knocked that bit off. Uh, so income, expenses minus pension gives me an income balance of £9,903.63. pence. Universal credit paid me for the year, over the course of that year, a total of £5,203.80. That gives me a total income of £15,107.43. Uh, now that gives me an average payment per month from Universal Credit of £433.65. However, there are months where I wasn't paid anything at all, and there were months when I was paid more, predominantly because my expenses went up. So I had to, to buy the laptop, and that's primarily for business reasons. Uh, I had to buy the software to keep doing these videos. That's a business expense because I do business videos, making videos, behind the scenes making videos as well. So that the only reason I bought that was so that I can keep earning income on YouTube. There was uh, my Shopify store, which is just over £200 a year, and that was a discount. I don't know what it's going to be next year. And other bits like fabrics and things like that. You can also claim back... Uh, what else can you also do? You can also claim back petrol mileage. You can't claim, as a, uh, when you're self-employed, you can't claim back petrol for driving to and from your usual place of work. But I work from home, so I don't have that. But where I have the, the cleaning jobs, most of them I walk to. But I've had one where I have to drive. It's only a short distance, but I couldn't walk it. And now I have my new job, and that's a further drive. So I claim back that mileage. And um, you claim back the equivalent of 45 pence per mile. So that's really a summary of my year on Universal Credit. Those are my individual numbers. If you are in a paid job, like a PAYE job, working for one employer, and you are also on Universal Credit, your ingoings and outgoings will look very different. My outgoings are quite complicated because I'm self-employed. So everything has to be declared that is a, a tax declarable item. So there are sometimes six or seven items on my expenses in a month. There might be 15 or 20. It depends on what I am doing that particular month. And as I said, you can claim things like uh, petrol for business mileage that isn't your usual place of work. I have fees on Etsy. I have fees for selling on Shopify. There is outgoing postage that I have to pay for. Um, I claim back half for my mobile phone because I use it equally between personal and business, and you can do that. Um, there are office supplies like printer cartridges. I have fees when people uh, give me money on coffee. I get charged for that. PayPal charges me for the business aspect of it. If I buy fabric to make things, that is something I can claim back. And it just kind of goes on and on. And you need to be really good with your paperwork. But if you're self-employed, you should be anyway. I don't find that the process of claiming on universal credit was any more complicated than just running a business where you are doing your 
books every month and, and keeping an eye on everything. It's just annoying because you've got to do it again. And the other annoying thing is that your month depends on when your claim started. So my claim started on the 20th of a month. So that means that my month to month is the uh, basically the, the 21st of a month to the next 20th of the month. So I have to keep a separate spreadsheet because I can't just go, oh, well, there are all of August's expenses. I'll put that in. It has to be within the right date order. So that's a bit of a pain. So that's one reason why I'm really glad no longer to have to do universal credit because it's just the added layer of spreadsheets that I have to do and, you know, paperwork to do. But it's not been horrific because I manage my time well, I work from home, I generally don't have a lot of commissions, so my time is my own, so I can balance that and be um, disciplined in how I do that. Now, what happens going forward, I don't know. For some reason, they haven't already cut me off the system, even though it's now been um, three weeks as of recording this, when my claim ended. So I don't know why they are still giving me dates for future meetings and things, because I'm not supposed to be with them. I'm going to leave it another week or so, and then I'm going to message them and say, why haven't you closed my claim? Because it might be that even though I'm not eligible, I have to close it. I'm not sure. I haven't had any information. Nothing has come through as yet. And in terms of that interest reclaim, I don't know... It won't be all of that interest. So I have that int over interest payment of £1,328.42, which I shouldn't have declared on my income. And obviously I won't get all of that back because it's proportional to a whole... Well, it was... I start, I, I, claim, I realised in May, I think it was May, that I shouldn't be claiming it. So it's August last year to May this year that they have to go back through the records and deduct those amounts. So it'll be proportional to incomes and outgoings, so it won't be that amount of money. I don't know what it will be. I've got absolutely no idea, and I've got no idea how long it'll take. They said it'll take absolutely forever to do, so I'm not going to get excited about that. And it, by the time I get it, it probably won't even be that much money by the time they've done the calculations. Uh, and that's it, really. I, I do want to keep doing videos on this because... The managed migration doesn't theoretically end until December for a lot of people and then you will have people going forward for another year self-employed on universal credit. So the videos that I have made will still be relevant. Some of the amounts might have changed, like they've changed the allowance, the housing allowance, the protection payments and uh, you know that might change again over the course of the next year because every April there's another budget we have the October mini budget but I don't think anything will be reflecting this um, so my videos will still be relevant to people who are self-employed who are on that managed migration so do keep watching these if you haven't already go back and look at the early ones because I've recorded videos from when my claim started so it was a real life experience of me learning the system in real time so there are, are confusions and complications and all that sort of thing because that's what it's like. It's a very complicated system if you don't understand these systems. I've never had any real experience of it. I didn't find it that problematic, but I do come from an administrative background where I was used to dealing with complicated admin and finances and, and my brain's just kind of wired for it. And I actually quite enjoy it. So that wasn't a problem for me. But for other people, I can imagine it could be quite tricky. So do go back and relook at the other videos. If you have comments, if you have questions, um, even if you're commenting on a video from a year ago, it'll still come up on my comments and it'll still be relevant because not much, that, not much has really changed in a year. So, yeah, do... Watch those, get the information that you need from it. If there's anything missing, let me know. It was so complicated just knowing what to say sometimes and not missing out information was hard 
because it could be a bit overwhelming at times. So I hope you found that useful. This potentially is the end of my universal credit claim, but as I say, there will be at least one or two more videos. They haven't actually closed my claim yet, so I don't know how that process works. And then, of course, there's the interest. Who knows about that? So there's at least two more videos in that. And if things change with regards to policies and things online, I may well comment on that because it's of interest to me. So I hope you found that useful. I have obviously been including some numbers up on the side here so that you can kind of process it. If you process things visually better, that will be there for you. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's the, that's the end of my major UC videos for now, at least. And it's taken ages to get this one done because everything got held up. It's always a complication. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, speak to you soon. Bye-bye.